How difficult is it to engineer an electric vehicle? Well, you think about that when you play with your kids. If you haven't, I encourage you to take a look at my Taycan Turbo review before we go ahead with the 4S. What is the difference between the Taycan 4S and the Turbo? What creates the force in the electric vehicle? Well, it's actually three things. One thing is the current, the second thing is the magnets, and then the third thing is the wiring in the electric engine. And let's start with the battery. Remember this picture that I drew with reviewing the Taycan Turbo? I revealed that 88% of the battery is only used for certain reasons that you can review in the Taycan Turbo review. So it, the turbo has the 93.4 kilowatt hour battery, but in use 83.7. In standard in the 4S, it is 79.2 kilowatt hours. And with the 12% reduction, that leaves us with 69.7 kilowatt hour. But for the net sum of 7,000 euros, you can up upgrade the 4S to the exact same batteries as the turbo. So then if you do that upgrade, the turbo and the 4S is basically the same. Well, unfortunately, it's not that easy. These are two different vehicles, the 4S and the turbo. But first, let's start with the significant large boot or trunk that we have in, in the Taycan. Remember, this is not a Europe long trip with your family car. It's more like a, you know, city car, so to speak. But nevertheless, let me go back to the complexity on distinguish the turbo and the 4S. We have already settled the differentials between the batteries. So the thing is to make it easy, the larger battery capacity you have, you will be able to extract more energy um, at a certain point. But the batteries is a DC. It needs to be converted to AC through an uh, inverter that are a pulsive, controlled pulsive um, that creates frequent magnetic rotating field, okay, that is added to the uh, solder in the uh, electric engine. And the inverter in the front actual could create a current of 300 amps and in the rear 600 amps. And remember that the Taycan has an 800 volt system. So let's take a short break, go up to my house, and I will show you how extreme these numbers is. This is incoming electricity to my home where my family lives. And it is 230 volts. Well, actually it's 400 and with ground it's 230, so to speak. But anyway, I have, in Sweden at least, considered a very high amp amps in my system. I have 25 amps. Normally in Swedish homes it's 16 amps. But you know I charge electric vehicles, I have a workshop, so I need, need that power. And the Taycan has 800 volts and could create up to 600 amps. It's extreme. It's a... It's a Let me give you another perspective. This, oh, that was a close one. <laughs> this is a Yerry can. And this is also one thing that's very different between an electric vehicle and a combustion engine. The energy you could actually, you know, listen to, you can smell it, and it's dirty. You get in contact with the energy source, with electricity, it's much harder and that's, uh, might fright some people. So we have settled that the battery could be upgraded in the 4S to the same battery pack as in the turbo. And we have also considered that it has the exact same inverter as the turbo. Remember, it's, it produces 300 amps in the front axle and 600 amps in the rear axle. So actually, in the maximum performance, you could actually take the number of voltages and multiply with the amps and you will get the effect of, 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 of uh, the engine. But it's not that easy even. So let me try to go further because the frequent magnetic rotating field that the inverter creates also affect how compact and, and, and the magnet in the electric in, uh, engine. Therefore, the wiring is 
in the solenoid, in the electric ending, in, this, in the Sartre, it's extremely important how compact you can wire up it. So in the Porsche electric ending, it's more squared and twisted form, making it more compact. And also it's very important to have a look to see how active length the actual end, uh, electric engine has. Meaning that the area of the Sator and in the turbo, the active length of the electric engine is for the rear axle is 210 millimeters, where in the 4S it's only 130 millimeters. And that is the biggest difference between the 4S and the turbo. The perk with the 4S is then that the, well, as always, larger displacement of the engine that you have, then it will take more energy. Therefore, the range of the 4S is much larger. Without the extended batteries, you will have 407 kilometers of range. And that is actually the same numbers as the turbo in standard. So therefore, you could consider if you want to spend $7,000 on the extra range on a city car or if you... I mean, why, and when I started to think of it, I would considering to save the $7,000 on the extra batteries because I'm not going to do that long trips with this electric vehicle. So therefore, save the money. Because this, yeah, you will get the extra range to 460 kilometers with the batteries, but nevertheless, just keep it as it is. I think that will, you know, you have enough power that you need to travel back and forth to work. Still, there is no place to drive it on a track, at least in Sweden, because you will not have the charging station. So for me, 4S, no extra batteries, just leave it. There is, of course, a second-hand value of the extra battery pack in the Taycan 4S, and the future will tell if the $7,000 investment is good or not. To conclude the 4S... So it's not like the turbo, because that really throws you away, but it is absolutely good enough on the 4S. Remember, the party piece of the Taycan is not the acceleration, not on the turbo either, because the, the party piece is the low center of gravity and the pleasure you have in the driving. It's, you know, it is a true pleasure to drive this vehicle. And that is what, what it's all about. You're not buying a Taycan because of, of, a, of a, the driving straight forward. No, there are other cars that could, could you know, cope with that. You, you basically buy a Taycan because you want that Porsche driving experience and having that blast and the Biro, that's what, you, that's what you aim at. That is what you want to achieve. That is what, you know, that's what it's all about. It's not about the uh, straights. Uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, it's the drive. <laughs> One design detail that are so spectacular and beautiful is the bulges, the RS-inspired bulges in the roof line. But remember, if you do not select the glass roof on the Taycan, you will not be able to fit a roof rack. And that is, you know, so, you know, it, it kind of twists my mind because I want the beautiful bulges, but still I want to put my bikes on the roof, so again, selecting between beauty and practicality. I have not driven any other Porsche with such a high comfort level. And when I say high comfort level, I mean the, 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 the quiet ride that you get in a Taycan. Obviously, the uh, electric engine helps a lot when it comes to having a proper smooth drive. And the electric engine is also, I would say, less interference in the uh, accelerating and diesel acceleration in comparison to the combustion engine. So there are very much perks with having an electric engine in a comfortable point of view and, and especially the smoothness that the electric engine presents that could not be measured towards, uh, towards the combustion engine. Again, I've said it, the interior are really good, even though the Taycan, just as the 992, the steering wheel are covering some of the instrument cluster that then I need to move my head left and right to be able to view. But uh, the most important things are where it should be. It takes some time that you switch it and, and configure it according to your wishes. 
I like to have the range and the kilometers per hour clearly in front of me. I would like to see the um, inner drive, what it's doing, and I can sense the speed in front of, of the, uh, the vehicle in front of me, etc. So that is my um, choice of, of like, liking when it comes. So, and also this is very cool with inner drive because I have a stop sign right here and the car stops. That is something I really appreciate with the inner drive also because it's really following the rules. So that is, um, well, that, that, is, that is a perk when you are talking to the phone and you, you, you need that extra comfort. I, I'm, I'm impressed because the other uh, solutions that I've seen does not react to stop signs as, as we just saw this car did. Here we are seated in the spectacular Taycan. And um, as I mentioned when I was in Berlin, I think these rear seats are okay. For me, this is a normal sized vehicle. You don't need more space for a, well, it's not a long distance vehicle to start with, but I think I have already complained about the seating an angle for the rear seat. But nevertheless, I did not want them to, you know, lift the ceiling because then it will not look as good. So I'm perfectly okay with that. That compensation is definitely okay. Uh, I believe that I have enough space in, in for my knees. So yes, I would say this is okay. The head space is okay. As you know, Germans, you know, they, they take the largest German that they have in the factory, put them in the uh, prototype car and if it fits, then it's okay. Otherwise, I think we have we are looking at a very high quality standard in the rear seats, just like an Audi or Volkswagen is far from an exclusive vehicle like like a Bentley or Rolls Royce, etc. For let's say 150,000 euro. Wait a minute, this is a 150,000 euro vehicle. Hmm. There you go. Anyway, uh, this is a spectacular place to be when it moves. Oh, wrong. Well, I'm, I've said that in my previous video, it's quite difficult. And what I did right now was actually to enter the car the wrong way. And as a consequence, it's quite tricky. This is not an easy car to jump into, but when you are seated, you are blessed, so to speak. First of all, the design of this vehicle are spectacular interior. It's, uh, it really feels the Porsche DNA and also you feel the futuristic design. The changes they, they have made are spot on. Love it, love it, love it, love it. I have difficulty to learn the, all these touch screens and everything, uh, but on an electric vehicle, I understand that is what the public wants. I prefer the old buttons because I'm a dinosaur and that's me, sorry and driving position are as good as it gets, you know. I've said that you get connected in the can, the Panameras towards the sports car, but this is just one more dimension because it's the same seating position. I love the way that you squeeze down and put yourself in place. The seats are, ooh, I really, the, the seats are a level of itself. They have done some changes that I cannot understand what they've done. Ooh, I'm getting excited here, but that's just how it is. It is a, beautiful cabin. I really love what they've done. This is the party piece for me when I'm entering. I had the same experience when I was in Berlin. I got that Porsche DNA feeling, but it felt futuristic. I loved it. Thank you, Porsche, for really putting effort to this. Then, obviously, there are some ridiculous options like the passenger display in this car that I'm not going to review because I haven't found out what it's used for. Because I actually start to worry about my British friends, to be honest, because what they are saying is that navigate the PCM system with your left hand is difficult. That's why the passenger needs better access with the right arm. That means that all the British people are not able to use the PCM system. Or how should I interpret the passenger display? Nevertheless, I'm not getting into that territory. A ridiculous option, if you ask me. But... Alcantara, or actually Racetac, as, it, as it's, they, they have skipped Alcantara, they've changed supplier, it's the same, pretty much the same, it feels the same, it's going to wear the same, I believe, uh, don't appreciate it on the daily driver, on the GT cars, like the GT4, yes, 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 on the Spider, no, 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 on a Taycan, no, 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 <laughs> no, why have they put Racetac on the steering wheel, I mean, it's, uh, 
proper leather, ladies and gentlemen. I also got a question on Instagram where they asked me if my spider had a, a silver stitching. You don't want silver stitching on the steering wheel because it's going to get dirty and it's not going to look good. I mean, it's just, you know, let your wife borrow the car and they will, you know, eat that burger in the car and then you will have ketchup on your silver stitching. No, no, no. Keep it black stitching, keep it in leather. Whew. Let's continue. Ha <laughs> ha! I always forget to lock the car, close the car. That's the problem, I jump off, it starts automatically, I jump off the car, I always forgot to turn the engine off. So I most likely park the car with the engine on. Electric vehicles. If I were to buy a 4S, I wouldn't spend money on the electric charging lid because to be honest, this feels much safer without having any electronic that needs to work when the winter arrives. If we also take a um, look at the materials in the interior, this is the standard interior except for the roof lining that is in Sportex or Racetech or whatever now the Alcantara trash is called, but in the ceiling I think that is really nice and comfortable. So I would rather spend the money on the ceiling rather on the interior. I think the standard interior are spot on. You don't need more, you don't need less. It is not as luxury as I've said as in comparison to let's say uh, Rolls Royce or anything else, but I mean, phew, what can I say? It's a Porsche, it's a driving experience. It's not a you know, a sofa that you should just uh, relax in uh, and get into your destination. The ride itself or the drive itself is, is what Porsche is all about. The biggest party piece for the Taycan is definitely its drivability, especially in the corner. The second biggest party piece is the design. I mean, pay attention to the design and the details that are still present from the concept vehicle Mission E. And if you select the Carman Red and this one, well, then actually people spot the car much easier. The greyish turbo I had before, well, they didn't twist their heads on the street as much as they do with the Carman Red. I actually believe that the Taycan together with the 718 Spider is one of the two most beautiful vehicles that you can buy today. One department at Porsche that are extremely drunk, most likely 24-7, is within the rims of the wheel department. I'm not sure if I have ever seen such a ugly wheels at any vehicles. And uh, if you agree with me, please put a comment below. It feels so strange because, you know, I love B-roads and the, the Taycan really, really gives me that proper B-road experience. Of course, when I... And this is very important. This is not a high-speed vehicle. If you live in Germany on Autobahn, about 150 kilometers an hour, that is not a nice vehicle to be in. Then I prefer the Panamera Turbo S E Hybrid is a much better autobahn racer, that's for sure. I need to correct myself from the Taycan Turbo review. I actually said that this part here only was there for its design. But as usual, Porsche have some feature and it is a true aerodynamic feature that are present on the vehicle. But I cannot believe that I missed it. I have to double check it once more time. But as you can see here, it is for the airflow to pass. But this is still a big question mark for me. I looked back to my Taycan Turbo videos and as you can see, no airflow in this car. Please follow me on Instagram and I will try to post as soon as I have cleared out these questions. Regardless fake airflows or not, it is still a very beautiful car. Spinning like a broken record For a player you don't know that many major chords We hang out
Volkswagen purchase department has really done it this time, fitting Hancock tires to the Taycan. Remember, the Porsche brand is all about driving and the composer of the art of driving is the tires. For me, fitting Hancock tires on a Porsche brand, well, that is pretty close to taking the French champagne and bottle it up in plastic pet bottles. It will work, doesn't it? It will most likely taste the same, but you know, it will not be the same feeling. If you have driven a Taycan, everything else will feel extremely old, that's for sure. Drive the Taycan, jump into 992, whoa, what happened? An old car. But I wouldn't buy one. It's still too expensive. $160,000 for this vehicle as it is equipped today. And I think you could get a better Porsche experience with that kind of money if you want to be environmental friendly. As I've said, buy a BMW i3s, drive it back and forth to work, coming home, jump into your combustion engine 911, for example, or a GT4 Spider having a blast in the weekends. I will eventually buy a Taycan, definitely, because I want to own it. That driving experience I don't want to miss. But in a couple of years, when the depreciation has fallen, over 50%. And uh, yeah, that's it. Not much more to say, is it, in, in terms of blah, blah, blah.